creating the Catskill Watershed Corporation and requiring the City of New York to provide funding for various water quality programs such as our septic program, community wastewater, uh, education, economic development programs, and so on and so forth. So that's where the community wastewater management program and the uh, CWC came to be. Um, the community wastewater management program uh, started in 2004. Um, the MOA uh, lists 22 communities throughout the West of Hudson watershed. This list was put together by various local officials as population centers or density areas, villages, smaller hamlets that didn't have means of a centralized or decentralized wastewater system. Uh, that list of 22 communities is in the Memorandum of Agreement. Communities 1 through 7 uh, were offered the New York City DEP new infrastructure program. Communities 8 through 22 are considered a continuation of the new infrastructure program, but are administered by the Catskill Watershed Corporation <coughs> under our Community Wastewater Management Program. Uh, to date, we've completed seven projects under the Community Wastewater Management Program. Uh, we've completed projects in the hamlet of Bovina Center in Bloomville and Hamden and Trout Creek in Delaware County. One in Greene County uh, in the hamlet of Ashland and then one in the hamlet of Boyceville here in Ulster County. Uh, recently, um, the 2007 FAD mandated that the City of New York provide funding uh, to the CWC for the remaining communities 8 through, eight through 22. Um, and more specifically, uh, a recent FAD renewal issued last year uh, required that the City of New York provide funding for communities 18 through 22 to be administered by the Community Wastewater Management Program. Um, community number 18 of that list of 22 is the Hamlet of Shandaken, uh, which brings us here tonight. Um, in 2007, there was a, a study that was funded by the New York City DEP, but was completed by the New York State Environmental Facilities Corp Corporation, which essentially was a very brief windshield drive-through survey of communities 8 through 22 um, that were eligible to participate in the Community Wastewater Management Program. I'll note that that study is 14 years old. Um, it's what we base our projects off of, how we, the baseline of, of when we start our projects, how we delineate a proposed service area or preliminary service area, and really identifies the properties in this, content, in this population center that could potentially be um, provided a, a wastewater solution. Um, two maps right here that have been placed um, are directly from the 2000 EFC study um, solely of the hamlet of Shandaken. This study, um, this report um, that was completed by EFC uh, proposes a, a wastewater system that uh, has a total design flow of 26,000 gallons per day. Um, and is a combination of septic maintenance district in which properties have their own on-site wastewater treatment or septic systems and the others that are the smaller lots um, have a centralized system or a cluster system they essentially uh, have one there's one site that treats the wastewater from that group or cluster of homes Henry Lamont will go into a little bit more detail uh, on the EFC study and the technical background. I'm oh, sorry, did you turn that back? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. know they're, they're tough to read. And again, this is noted in the conceptual layout plan. Uh, these black dots would note the properties which would have their on site systems replaced. And then this thicker black line would note this sanitary main line or the sewer line in the smaller properties along this corridor um, in which they would um, be treated, the wastewater would be, would be treated on what's called Site A on this property right here, which again is, is kind of difficult to read, but again this is very preliminary um, and Henry will be going into more detail, uh, more detail on that. One final thing I wanted to note that before I hand it over to Henry is that uh, Lamont Engineers has worked for CWC as a consultant, professional consultant for the CWC since 2004, since the program's inception. But most recently, 
um, per this most recent FAD renewal uh, in which we were provided funding uh, to move forward with communities 18 or offer the program to communities 18 through 22. CWC did uh, go out to RFP a request for proposals um, and, and Lamont was clearly uh, the most uh, experienced and professional and feasible um, consulting firm to conduct the engineering services for these remaining uh, five com communities. So uh, that was in, two, in, in March of this year and Lamont was officially hired for CWMP3 uh, these last five communities, they were hired in June of this year. So uh, with that, I would like to um, turn it over to Henry Lamont, who uh, in this case is, is principal engineer at Lamont Engineers, but for the Community Wastewater Management Program is uh, 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 pr uh, engineer in charge um, for the program. So, Henry? Sure. Hi, um, I'd like to introduce uh, our firm, to those of you who don't know us too well, um, I started the firm in uh, 1981 to serve small rural communities, upstate, eastern upstate New York, and uh, that's what we've been doing ever since. Do a lot of municipal work, uh, probably 90% of our uh, workload is small municipalities like Shindakin. Um, this is a, a couple of textbooks that we put together uh, a few years ago, 2007. I think I saw a couple of these here. Yeah, you might have, but you know, I don't want to make you have to go find them. I'm not going to refer to them right away, uh, and uh, tonight's presentation is going to focus just on the general outline of the process of doing one of these public works projects, particularly wastewater public works. Because uh, I found in my practice that uh, it's really important, real important for the board governing body to have some idea where we are and where we're going. Um, so uh, first, I'd like to introduce Judy Tangman of my company. Uh, she is uh, going to be the overall project manager. Uh, assisting me with all five of the CWMP3 projects. She has been the overall project manager uh, of uh, all the other ones we've done for CWC, uh, except for the first one, which is the line um, She came to, uh, to my firm as a typist in 1981, and then she became a clerical person. And she became office manager, then she became the bookkeeper, then she became a uh, junior planner, planner, senior planner, and now she's a project manager. She knows more about the business than anybody I know, including myself. But she started from the ground up, you know. Uh, anyway, Judy's here. Uh, Mylon Jackson is the gentleman next to her. Mylon came to our firm in 2000. Um, as a project engineer, he, like myself, had worked for a contractor uh, after he graduated from Clarkson. Uh, I, of course, I didn't graduate from Clarkson, I graduated from Cornell in engineering. Uh, and then he went to work with for another consultant, as, a, as, a, as did I, and then came to our firm in 2000. Uh, he's done a number of wastewater projects, uh, did the design work for uh, one that's uh, out to bid in South Courtright, but also some others in the state, uh, one in East Bern, uh, which is just finishing up construction. He also became a part partner and a board director's member of the firm in 2007. He'll be the project engineer uh, on the project for this study phase should you uh, decide to go ahead. Um, and so, Next thing I'd like to point out is this little handout with the CWC's logo on top. It's in one of your spots. So, you know, I guess they're all right here. It's a flow chart. Uh, 
most general flow chart we have. It's just got the big, real basic activities. Uh, sometime uh, soon you're going to have to decide whether you're going to go ahead and participate in the program. And if you do, that will initiate the study phase. And the study phase, you're probably aware, is the uh, task during which we get the basic ideas of how, how best to sewer the community and what it would go on. Um, as it says here, determine the preferred option in the study phase. So if you decide to go ahead, you go ahead in the study phase. Uh, the study phase will result after the studies and the analysis and some review of options and meetings of the community and some surveys and various things that I'll talk a little bit more about later will result in a preliminary engineer's report. That preliminary engineer's report will indicate, among other things, the area to be served, how much flow is expected, how we're going to propose to treat it, and how much it's going to cost to build, and how much it's going to cost to operate and maintain after it's built. Um, you then uh, have the option at that point, uh, after DEP approves the report, first you'll approve the report, and then DEP will approve the report, and CWC, and the black grant will be offered. And the black grant is offered is for the design and construction of the project. And at that time, you can decide whether or not to proceed with what's called the pre-construction phase, which is basically design, land acquisition, like setting everything up to do the construction of the project. So at that point, you have another opportunity to decide whether to continue with the program. Then the, in the pre-construction phase, final design, district formation, develop the sewer use law, get the land you need, fit the project, and develop the O&M plan and contract. The bids come in, with our help you compare them to the block grant, all costs of the block grant, and at that point you have an opportunity to see whether you're under budget, and also an opportunity to say no, we don't want to proceed with construction of the project. If you decide to proceed with construction, though, then you have to finish it. You know, and we'll, we won't, uh, we'll be in a position where we should have a contingency in the budget. Uh, that, that, you don't want to enter construction without a contingency because there's all this stuff that comes up and unforeseen conditions that have to be paid for through change orders and so on. Uh, but uh, you have an indication of what the budget is and what the black grant is and how much contingency you have and whether it's healthy enough contingency to make you feel like you can make the commitment to finish. Uh, assuming you don't, if you're not comfortable, for whatever reason the community doesn't seem in favor of it, you can opt out at that point, despite having done the preliminary study and the design. But once you agree to go ahead with construction, obviously, uh, to start construction, they want to, the funder wants to see it finished. Uh, so, um, that gives you an idea of all the specific tasks involved, the more details. Uh, list of all the things that's in the guidance manual that I passed out. There's also a handout excerpt from that guidance manual. And I'd just like you to turn to the second to last page, which looks like this. It's a flow chart. Now this uh, flow chart step-by-step -step indication of all the steps you've got to go through the process. Now, we're not at the beginning of this. Right? We're not at the beginning of this. This is a, the manual is general 
and it's not specific to the CWMP. But uh, that doesn't mean there's no soul searching to do, but it, it means that some of that's already started. It was started when they negotiated the MOA, and the county planners got together and, and uh, decided that one of the things they wanted to the city was a program for communities that wanted to do some sewer projects. So the project is pretty much conceived and it's pretty well organized at this time. Uh, and we've got to go through the fact finding and feasibility stage, which of course was done in a preliminary way by the EFC. And this is the EFC study uh, for Shandaken. Uh, there was uh, one of these done for each of the 8 through 22 communities. Uh, it's very cursory, it's based all on desktop. But they did develop an estimate of the sewer flow for the community, which they estimated to be uh, 22,750. But it's, uh, it was done in 2000, and things have changed since then, so that's been done over the uh, they did come up with a, an area that they uh, proposed to sewer, was the area that the uh, county planners and CWC negotiated right here around the corner. Uh, there was a phase two conceived of, apparently at the time, some of the people in the community thought it should go towards us from the hamlet down here a ways. Um, as Nate said, the plan is to have a bunch of on-site septics rebuilt, stay where the, right on their individual sites, and then there was a few uh, lots that couldn't be served adequately on their site, and those were planned to go to a site uh, called Site A for a community septic system. It's called a cluster just because it doesn't include the whole community. Um, so that's sort of where we'll start. Is that a feasible solution? And uh, as indicated in this alternatives for municipal wastewater management systems, our approach is to look at the simplest option first. The simplest option, the least cost option, the least uh, operation and maintenance cost. And that is a septic maintenance district. That's where the, the town, as the governing body, takes on the management of the individual septic systems to make sure that they're up to code and functioning properly. And it's much cheaper to do that, and to operate. The things that get in the way, though, are whether the lots of size are big enough to put the, the system on the, on the ground uh, for each of the individual lots, uh, whether the soils are adequate. And uh, one of the issues is, is uh, a reserve area for standards has to be set aside in case the beach field fails so you can build a new one. Um, EFC looked at the project and said they thought it was, they had soils maps and, and so on. What we do is we develop a septic limitations map, which is where we try to map all the uh, parameters that interfere with or uh, uh, problems for individual septic systems. Steep slopes, flood plains, distances from streams, the 100 foot requirement to stay away from the stream with a, with a septic system. Um, put that all on a map and analyze what percentage of the community could do their own on-site system. And if that percentage is relatively high, then we only have to have a few lots that would have special systems, what they call engineered system in the jargon, jargon with pre-treatment and so on. Then, we would recommend a septic maintenance system. Uh, we've done one of those in the town of Delancey, the town of Hamlet, the Lansing, the town of Hamlet. 
and they were in good lots and good soils and it worked out great. And uh, that's the best option if you can do it. If it's not feasible, you have to consider the next simplest option, which is a community septic option, where you bring all the sewage, you know, collection system and take it to a single or a couple sites where you'd have a community leach field, big septic tank uh, and uh, big leach fields. Uh, more complicated because they have to be dosed uh, in kind. There's lots of beds and groups of them are dosed at one at a time. So. Um, the other, if that's not feasible, then you try to consider a combination of things, which is what ESC uh, looked at in their study. Some of the lots didn't meet the requirements for a septic system on site, so they found a site in the preliminary way to see if they could handle collection disposal on a site. Uh, for the small lots. Uh, then if that doesn't work, uh, the program is uh, eligible to consider a wastewater treatment plan, which is the most complicated, the most expensive, the most expensive to operate, and the most, uh, the most difficult to operate and maintain. And that's why it's the last, last resort in our little algorithm for how we figure this out. Um, so, in your packet there's also some discussion of this in pictorial form here, I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, the only, I think the last thing I'd like to go over with you. Yeah. Is Anytime. It's a uh, district you're talking about here. How is this laid out in here? Well, they didn't put a district boundary on this map. So, but except they put one on phase two. So every lot that, so the only way to really understand what they're doing here is that every lot that's adjacent to a sewer line, which is what these are, mm -hmm. and every lot that has this big dot on it that needs individual septic system are the lots that are included. And when we come up with a map of the district, there'll be a boundary like, like they have around here. In both. I'm already going to start off that I, it was my impression that the boundary actually went down Creekside Drive quite a ways over the years somewhere from what I understood when it was originally drawn up. Well, this is, this is uh, what, what was, what was, what was, drawn up by EFC and this is really our starting point um, but there's an opportunity to discuss to look at the other areas look at the needs and discuss whether you have an interest in putting them in or the community the Hamlet people have an interest in putting it in and propose to put them in they'll in, in order to be included anything we we almost every project is included somewhat more than the EFC studies show. Um, but to justify it and uh, get approval of it, there has to be a water quality benefit. In other words, there has to be a need. So um, that kind of segues into this, this little handout here, which is what I'd like to conclude with. And again, uh, feel free to jump in with any questions at any time. But uh, out of all these steps um, that need to be gone through, uh, we're talking about